So I think it's time to start. And uh, today we talk about uh, AKJS drop reactors outside the JVM boundaries. And uh, yes, please remember to rate this session. And uh, first of all, the boring thing, who am I? I'm Andrea Peruffo. I'm a developer. I r usually write software from embedded devices to PLCs, FPGs, whatever, cluster microservices, whatever. <laughs> I just like to write software and I enjoy that. And uh, right now I'm working in a Unicredit research and development team. Uh, Unicredit is a bank and we try to push new technologies into the legacy system of the bank to improve our system and to have better systems for tomorrow. And these are my handles on GitHub and Twitter. Uh, so, first of all, we start with ACA. Everybody of you knows ACA. It's an actor uh, It enables you to use uh, the actor model within your applications, and uh, it is one of the two uh, most popular and uh, production-ready actor model present right now in the in, in the industry of, compu of, uh, of uh, computer and. Uh, uh, the other one is Erlang, obviously, <laughs> and uh, uh, it is great. It's a great library, and I really want to use it everywhere. And um, on the other side, we have Scala.js, yes, that uh, is the second compiler of Scala, and uh, is uh, uh, really stable, and it is a great project, and, uh, and enables you to write Scala code that uh, can run and can be translated to JavaScript and run on any JavaScript virtual machine. From that two parts, we try, we want to use ACA, the actor model, within our Scala.js applications. So why? Why should I care <laughs> of this project? There are many reasons. First of all, code reuse. I want to reuse all my, uh, all my code wherever, I, uh, I, uh, wherever in my application. So uh, if I write some behaviors, I usually write uh, uh, my application based on the actor model, and I want to reuse them uh, and the libraries everywhere. Code portability. I don't want, to, I don't like to get stuck on the JVM for everything. I'd like to, to have separate virtual machine where I can deploy my application. There are many cases where uh, a JVM is not available or, uh, uh, and uh, I, I'd like to have an alternative. I'd like to port my application to different platforms such as V8 or Phantom or whatever. Uh, high modularization, I want to refactor my code and I want to re, uh, uh, modularize it uh, between the, the barrier from front end to back end, even if I describe behaviors with actors. And uh, I want to use, I'd, re I'd really like to use the same programming model uh, everywhere I program. If I, if I use the, program, the actor programming model, uh, I have one mindset uh, and I write very fast and I'm uh, very proficient in my code, uh, in my code and I, I'd like to reuse the same model even in front end. I don't want, uh, I don't like to, to, to change and have in front end to use React or whatever, different models of programming. I, I just want to reuse my concept everywhere that are great. And uh, I'd like to have transparent communication between different platforms, between, because serialization is still <laughs> today a problem and uh, I don't want to get stuck with it. Concurrency management, even if JavaScript virtual machines are uh, single threaded, there is concurrency. And right now it is managed by, by using callbacks that are bad. Uh, you, you easily uh, go into inner, uh, a lot deeper nest the callbacks and, uh, and uh, you, uh, you will like to use an actor model to really simplify your code and, uh, and uh, uh, shape it in a better manner. And uh, parallelism management. Uh, also, in JavaScript, there are uh, new things that are coming up, like such as web workers, and uh, so also parallelism, uh, true parallelism in JavaScript world is possible. And tomorrow, I want to tame it with a with a good model, such as the actor one. So, what is my goal for this project? My goal is to be lazy. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, previous approaches to port ACA on different platforms like ACA.net or several other attempts to port uh, on Scala.js starts from the ACA code and uh, take it, copy and paste, 
on the, uh, for the other target and modify the things and, and have to re basically rewrite the ACA framework for the new target platform. I don't, I don't really want to do that. There are guys that uh, make a really great work, and uh, thanks guys for Rakka, that is a great library, and uh, it, it is uh, maintained, and uh, there are a lot of bug fixes everywhere, and uh, improvement even in the core right now, and uh, I'd like to not overcome their work and do not have to repeat their work twice. I just want to write a little bit of glue code, a, a little, a, a little uh, bit of glue code that uh, uh, makes the ACA original sources, compiles and run, and make them run the ACA model on the JavaScript platform. So I just write a thin layer of glue code and uh, I can reuse much of the ACA, uh, of the ACA core code. So the question is, this is crazy, does it work? And the answer is yes, sir. <laughs> I can demonstrate you <laughs> right now. So we start with some example uh, to show you what happens. Uh, we start with uh, a ping pong that is an hello word in the actor model, and uh, so this is pretty easy if you write a actor application. And uh, so we spawn an actor system uh, called ping pong with a specific configuration on, uh, on the JVM and JS side, and we define a method that that uh, retrieves us uh, a props for an actor that uh, just matches on a matcher string, and uh, when he, ma he receives, receives that, uh, that string, answer to the sender, answers to the sender with the answer string, and, and uh, he prints the, what, uh, what, is, what is happening. On the start, obviously, we spawn two actors, a ponger that uh, when receives a ping re uh, answers with a pong, a and uh, a pinger that uh, when receives a pong answers with a ping. This is pretty trivial. After one second, we send to the pinger a pong message pretending to be the, the ponger, and after two seconds, we just kill the actors and terminate the system. So this behaves exactly like expected on the JVM side. And uh, as you can see, there are ping pong going, go, uh, going through the two actors. But what happens is that we can compile it thanks to Scala.js. And uh, we compile it in uh, JavaScript. And uh, OK, I go with Node just to show you that, uh, that it is n uh, not, uh, not a joke. <laughs> And I can start node and then uh, require the modules. And then we can start our application and it runs. And this is node and this is exactly the same behavior that we have on uh, JVM and this is great, we are using vector model and this is completely concurrent and uh, this is great. <laughs> and uh, so, something more difficult right now, uh, for example, there, there are uh, algorithms that are inherently, inherently concurrent, such as REFT that is a consensus algorithm. We just take an implementation, a trivial implementation that is not full-fledged, but this is an algorithm, and uh, it tries to elect a leader, a leader over, over um, uh, with a consensus, is a consensus algorithm, and uh, it can run on our JVM side, as you expect. This is pretty unstable, so it will elect different leaders from time to time. I hope so, <laughs> at least. And uh, yes, the leader is changed and everything is working. And uh, yes, I want, I'd like to run it also on the JS side. I stay in SBT this time. And uh, Yes, it's fast optimizing. We have a JavaScript file that is executed, and we have exactly the same behavior. So uh, what happens is that even non not trivial ACA 
application can run even on JavaScript, and my algorithms works also there. And this is great. So we try to go now into a more uh, JavaScript friendly environment, that is the browser. And uh, in the browser, we have, we have the DOM. And the DOM, if you think of the DOM, you, you, you know that there is a hierarchy. But yes, ACA actors are modeled as a hierarchy. So there is a similarity. And uh, this can map very well one on each other. So I can map the, behavior, the life cycles of um, uh, my actors to the rendering of the page of node elements. So I can easily, with less than 100 lines of code, uh, map uh, these two things to each other. And I can write a DOM actor that do that. And uh, at this point, I can spawn an actor system, open my page, and uh, do uh, the very first tutorial of JavaScript you, <laughs> you, can, you can do, a to-do list. And so first of all, uh, thanks to Scala text, I can write in Sc uh, all of this in Scala. And I have a to-do uh, element that uh, has an input box. And uh, every time you press the button near it, you just spawn another element of the to-do list. And the to-do to element is done with, a, is, is obviously an element that uh, takes a string and uh, display it. And uh, this is what happens. And uh, I can say orange, apple, whatever. I'm just spawning actors, and uh, you notice that there is a, a, a button remove. And uh, how does it work? It is pretty easy because uh, our remove just send a poison pill to himself. So <laughs> just killing the actor, I can remove my elements, and everybody and everything remain <coughs> within a context uh, with the actor model and uh, play very well with it. <laughs> so. Let's go for an example a little bit more complicated. Now we go for a chat, the second example in JavaScript that you can try. So uh, we define, first of all, the front end of our application. And uh, our application will have uh, a chat UI, and our chat UI will be pretty uh, similar to, to the to-do list, and uh, want to add to, the, uh, to our interface a new chat box Every, every time we, we write, uh, uh, when, when we, we click a button, just next to an input, uh, an input element that, uh, uh, where we can write uh, a URL. First thing that the, the chat box will do is open a new web socket to that URL. And uh, after that, we bind the action of uh, the, the callbacks on, on, of, on message to the action to send to himself, to myself, a new message. And uh, after that, we have just uh, a, simple, a simple template that uh, has a message box where we can put new messages inside and just send them over the, over the web socket. And we have the list of the last um, for, uh, last strings that are sent over the web socket. And uh, when we receive a message, we just update our template to have the new, the, new, uh, the, the new text, and we take just the right five. So we have this, and uh, yes, we can add a new server uh, web socket. But what happened in the back end? In the back end, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can easily write some uh, really trivial code to manage the WebSocket connections. And uh, that will manage all the clients. And uh, we have uh, just three messages, add client, remove client, uh, and message, obviously. We spawn a system, and we spawn one single actor that will uh, care about all the connection over the web sockets. This is just an example, obviously. And uh, the behavior of this, of, uh, of this manager will be just to, to keep track of his clients of the life cycle of his clients. And when he receives a message, he just broadcasts to all the clients uh, at the moment attached uh, that message. 
on this shared code that is the business logic that can be complicated uh, how you like, you can write a JVM implementation, for example. So in this case, we write a NACA HTTP implementation. Uh, we just uh, reuse the system that we created in the shared code, and uh, uh, we just uh, bind the root path uh, that we expose with our, with our web server to an handle of WebSocket that is a flow uh, from sync to source, and our sync and source are already uh, actors. And uh, simply, when we receive a message from the WebSocket, we just send it to the uh, manager we seen before. And uh, on the other side, w uh, where we produce messages, every time uh, when, uh, when the connection is, uh, is up, well, this actor is pwned, so we bind the life cycle of this uh, actor to the registration to the manager, and every time we receive a chat message message object, we just, pub we just produce it on, the, on, our, on our web socket. And uh, so what happens is that it runs on 9001, and we can start testing it. We open a couple of application, a couple of connection, and we can say, uh, yes. This works, and uh, yes, obviously, you can have any, as many connections as you like, and this is done by Aka HTTP. Okay, this is great, but normal. But what we can do more? We know that servers are done even on Node, so we can have an implementation of uh, our server-side applica application uh, that runs on Node using the, using the modules of HTTP and the WebSocket that are uh, available uh, on Node, and so we create a server, and uh, as we did before, we bind the requests to the spawn of a new actors every time with a connection, and as soon as the, the connection handler, the WebSocket handler, starts, it binds the, uh, the callback to the, to the action of sending messages to, insert, to, to somewhere, and uh, in this case, uh, we bind the action of receiving a message to send to the manager, and uh, we bind the close to, to, to a self-poison pill to, to kill himself, and uh, then we add the client, uh, remove the client on pre-start and pre post up and we, we, when we receive a message from the manager, we send it over the WebSocket. And this is on uh, 9002, and we can reuse our before created interface. And yes, this is not JS, and uh, this is isomorphic Scala, yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh, yes, but next step, next step will be to leave out the server. I don't want to have a server. Why I should have a server? Well, there are new exciting technologies that help us make point-to-point -point connections such as WebRTC. And uh, uh, right now I will use it within this interface. These three boxes uh, you, you, can, you can see are three different iframes, so basically three different browsers that, uh, can, that can run in parallel. And this is a, a key exchange that is just a technical detail for having a, a connection over the WebSocket. And the connection is totally peer-to-peer. -to -peer. And uh, so this, this, the A page is uh, now connected with the B page. And uh, so we can add even the C one at this point. C is still alone. OK. Uh, 
Okay, at this point we have a connection through, uh, from A to B and from A to C, and this is a little tree that we created, and every message is just sent from one end point to the other without passing through a server. So we are completely serverless. And obviously, we have a data channel between A and B, and we can, we, can, uh, we can chat with B, and B can answer to A. And uh, implementing a trivial routing protocol from uh, C to B, you can, uh, you can also communicate through the wall tree, so you can uh, chat from C to B. Yeah, and also from, uh, from uh, B to C, going, uh, making the message go through A and back down to the other node. Yes, and this is completely serverless and this is a chat, so the limits uh, are really higher now and uh, we have a lot of new things that we can do with uh, these rising technologies, even in uh, the JavaScript world. So. Given that, which are the challenges that we faced during this process? And the challenges are related to the fact that uh, uh, basically ACA is written on the JVM, runs on the JVM, and they are related to the JVM. Okay, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> there are uh, real challenges uh, that are all related to the JVM, but that are the compatibility with Java standard library, first of all. The reflection that is used all around into the ACA core code. Serialization, as I said and uh, the type safe config. These are just four among the others, but we can uh, see them one by one. And uh, Java standard, for, uh, for example, Java standard lib, how we face them. And uh, Java standard lib uh, looks like this is a screenshot of uh, GitHub page of uh, Scala.js, Java util compatibility package at version 062 when we start this project. And uh, this is how it looks like now. <laughs> you can see the difference. <laughs> and uh, this is pretty exciting. It is not all of, all of us, uh, but also the Scala.js team work hard on this. And uh, right now, in 0.6.10, we have much larger compatibility with uh, Java, Java UT collection and with uh, uh, Java standard library that is, uh, that is uh, developed by us and uh, Nicolas Tuki for JUnit and other things. But right now, we have uh, a larger compatibility. So instead of uh, tricking ACA, we enlarge the environment and we work on things that enable ACA to be ported to Scala.js. So, second point will be about fields used within uh, actors. So, uh, if you read Scala code, you can say things like, uh, like this that are nice. You have a trait that is actor and, uh, and um, that has an implicit val that is context and is an actor context. But uh, in a few lines, you can say, you can see set actor fields. What does this mean? Reflect? Look up and set field. Can you can, do you know what this can do? <laughs> you can imagine on context. Yeah, they are using reflection all around, <laughs> and they are modifying underneath your values that are pretty immutable as, <laughs> as long as you know. This is for uh, having a clean API so you can uh, import uh, context. If it is a var, you cannot import that in API in, in your code, but this is bad to be, be ported on the, Scala, on, uh, on the JavaScript uh, side because we don't have a stable uh, point to, to, to change the, the variables between because we don't know the naming uh, that is produced by the compiler. So what happens is that uh, we patch after the compilation our, our code. So we basically, uh, you have to know that uh, Scala.js ships is, is a library with an intermediate representation and uh, we patch that after the compilation. So we write another piece of code that looks like the, uh, the previous one, we produce, 
the compiled version and we patch with the new compiled version the, the, the produced uh, the, the, the ER produced by, by our library, and that, that at runtimes works, <laughs> as I expect, and we, and we can emulate reflection at runtime with uh, structural types. There are other problems with runtime that are, but, but they are fixable with um, some annotations that are already available. Within uh, within Scala JS that are the JS uh, export and uh, uh, these are annotation that has to be added to the source code and we don't have a method to do that so we write a compiler plugin that add the annotations to the to the ACA code at compile time to be safe and to be sure that they are added at the right points semantically and not using uh, simple uh, string interpolation on, or uh, places like diffs. So what's next? Serialization. Here we have a big problem and uh, we, are we are working on it and uh, yes, <laughs> this is not still working. Uh, we are working uh, on uh, Scala Pickling. We uh, start with uh, Philip Aller and now we, are, uh, we, we hope <laughs> to have it ported on, uh, on uh, the Scala.js side soon and, uh, to, and uh, we can continue on working on it. And uh, type safe config. Type safe config is a great library for uh, having configurations, and it is used all around in a lot of uh, in a lot of uh, Scala, applica uh, Scala application, of course. And uh, what happens is that uh, it is entirely written in Java <laughs> One, once more, and uh, so it is not portable to Scala.js. So I asked to a, a colleague of mine, uh, Eduardo Vacchi, to write a parser for Ocon, and he writes it. It is not complete, but uh, it parses mass, m all the ACA config uh, configurations. And uh, the good news, uh, the good news is that. Uh, we can use it to have real interoperability with, uh, for configuration between uh, uh, JavaScript code and uh, JVM code. So we can see some uh, line of code statistics that we have in our code base. And uh, in AKJS, we have a total of uh, about 20,000 of line of code that runs in the, in the core library. And uh, of them, 70,000 are just shared with the ACA master today. And uh, what happens is that uh, we have ACA as a Git submodule, and we just sim link the files that we want to reuse in, uh, in ACA.js. And so we have just 3,000 line of code that uh, make the glue code to mix. ACA run on the Java, in the JavaScript virtual machines. And this is great because uh, it's a really high percentage. And uh, what are our plans for the future? So first of all, increase the shared code. In that 3,000 line of code, we still have some uh, uh, files that differ just for one keyword, uh, private, pub, uh, private or, pro or protected, or, uh, and uh, we, have, uh, uh, we can do much better right now. We want proper testing. We start to port, uh, to port a test kit and uh, to make it run even in the JavaScript environment. On that side, we have a big problem with uh, uh, the await <laughs> function that we have in uh, Scala, of course, and uh, that it's a bit harder to be reproduced in the JavaScript environment because of deadlocks and because we have obviously just one thread there. But we are working on it, and uh, uh, we have some solution. We have a solution that is pretty much working right now, and uh, so we can go on to try to port much of the test of the test of ACA uh, into ACA.js2. 
We want a portable serialization, of course. We really need that because we want to port Akka Remote. Akka Remote will be a killer feature for AkkaJS. You can imagine you can, you can write Scala code that, uh, that can communicate transparently between uh, the browser to the server without having to care about serialization finally in 2017 maybe <laughs> we can do that and that will be great and another good feature selling feature that we can we can have is the javascript interoper interoperability if we write a proper interface for a DSL that is usable from the javascript world uh, also javascript world can benefit from uh, the Akka library, because uh, right now there are no this kind of uh, frameworks available in the JavaScript land, and uh, something like Akka could benefit also that side. And uh, yes, at some point I have to think also at performances there. <laughs> we haven't uh, done it yet. And uh, yes, doing that, uh, this process, every, uh, everybody, when, pro when uh, you're programming, you use methodologies such as Scrum, Agile, and whatever. And for this project, we use BOP, that is Bothering Oriented Programming. <laughs> because uh, basically, we bother Sebastian the Ren, uh, for Scala.js to have our pull request. We bother the Akka team to, to have uh, our pull request to make Akka compatible, and they, <laughs> and they answer us, and uh, they are uh, getting them. And uh, I bother my colleague to write a parser for Ocon. I bother my, uh, the intern, uh, Gianluca, who starts the, that project, uh, to go on and write task it and so uh, a lot of people get bothered <laughs> into this project <laughs> for many reasons and uh, thanks to anybody is involved in any side of this thing because uh, this is great <laughs> thank you yes I think uh, this is all, and just today we published, we published to Maven the uh, first version of AKJS, and uh, I have to change some uh, references all around, but <laughs> it will be available soon, and uh, you can test, you can compile, you can run it on, on your own, and uh, it will work. And uh, thank you, guys. <laughs> So I think we have time for questions. Oh. Should uh, I start? Or ah, should, okay. I, should I ask? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, did you try to do that thing also with the FSM actors? So did you try the finished state machine actors also on the AKJS, or it's just with the normal become actors? Is the jo just the normal become of actors? So you didn't try with the FSM, you know the FSM. FSM, yes, FSM. It, uh, right now it compiles uh, even uh, on AKJS, and uh, I haven't tested it before. <laughs> but uh, but uh, because I don't use it much, but uh, yes, it will work okay. because it compiles and uh, is just a DSL on this concept, so it will work for sure. Hi. Uh, I have a question about remoting. So right now, uh, what I saw in the examples, well, I'm not sure, maybe I missed something, but you need to have uh, uh, either uh, Akka, um, Akka HTTP service, which will catch the HTTP message, and it will translate it into actor message and send to some actor, right? And uh, do you have any plans to actually make it part of the actor system, like, like with, uh, with real Akka remoting, that you don't need to, uh, to, 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 to do any HTTP server interactions. You basically, it's, it's a responsibility of the actor system to catch this message and delegate it to, to a special actor. Sure. I mentioned uh, about uh, Akka remote. Uh, with Akka remote, you can talk between actor system uh, that are on different platforms or over the network. And uh, with uh, this technology, having a, a pluggable transport in that you can talk not only over UDP like you, de uh, like you do today or uh, with uh, Euron with uh, the new version, but you will talk o also over WebSockets. And uh, if you have a pluggable transport and uh, a, a compatible serialization between the two platforms, you have a transparent 
intercommunication between different platforms from uh, Java to, to JavaScript. And you do not need any more HTTP if you don't really want to use it. Okay. And uh, another question, how many people at uh, Unicredit are currently working on this framework? How many people outside of Unicredit? Uh, yes, basically, uh, this is me and <laughs> sometimes others, but uh, no, there are a few people right now, and uh, we have few time to work on it, <laughs> to be honest. And so any help is uh, really appreciated. We have opened also the Gitter channel, so please come in and uh, help us. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question here, other side. <laughs> Uh, any plans for uh, multi-threading using something like uh, web workers? The fact about the web workers is that they are more close to separate JavaScript machines, virtual machines, than multi-threading. So uh, basically what we need really also for web workers is a hacker remote to have transparent communication between different systems. Because with web workers, everything will, uh, looks like uh, being on two separate JavaScript virtual machines. So as soon as we have Akka Remote, everything will go transparently, also with web workers and to manage parallelism on that. Thank you. You mentioned for the uh, remoting that you were looking into Scala pickling. I was wondering why you wouldn't look at Protobuf first, since I believe that's what ACA remoting uses internally as, as wire format, like for the system messages. Uh, the serialization right now in ACA uh, rely on a lot on, for, on a reflection, and we cannot really reuse it. So, uh, and on, Java, on the JVM, of course, you have reflection available everywhere, and the serialization is not a problem because Java itself has a strong serialization, uh, has a strong serialization inside that works really well everywhere, and uh, so we have to find an alternative to that for uh, having different platforms. The serialization is used for custom messages. That's true. That's where Java serialization is used. But the, the internal ECHA messages to, mm -hmm. to make up a distributed actor system are using protobuf, like Google protobuf definitions for, for their stuff. So, so I'm thinking since that probably there's some JavaScript library around that can do that, it might make sense to, to pick that up first to, to create a distributed actor system to the web browser. Mm -hmm. Uh, once again, please. <laughs> I think I don't catch your point. So, uh, uh, using Google Protobuf as the ah, uh, serialization okay. format instead of JSON from, from uh, Pickling. Yes, uh, we actually what we are trying to to do to have uh, is to have a, serial, a serialization that is that is, that is uh, based on macros at made at compile time and uh, Protobuf generates interfaces and probably is in some way. Uh, uh, can can be integrated even uh, in uh, AKJS, but uh, I haven't really taken a look at it because probably you need to to integrate another compiler that is, that is the Proto C compiler, and uh, I don't I haven't figured out how to manage that right now, but I haven't tried. So thank you, <laughs> thank you. Okay. If you <laughs> are okay, thank you very much, and yes, please remember to watch. <laughs>